All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a really good and quick, easy video for you guys. This is going to be part of the data tools series, and I'm going to be talking all about how to make Jupyter Notebooks work on your AWS instance. Now, I've already just shot a video doing this, and I went really into depth into every single setting and every reason why you're doing it. But I understand not everyone wants to watch 30 minute video of me setting up a server that, or instance that they just want to get going. So today I'm going to do a really quick, super fast um, guide step-by-step -step on how to do Jupyter Notebooks on AWS. So pay attention because I'm going fast. Make sure to pause the video anytime you need any help. Okay, so first things first, I would open my guide. I would go to step one on how to get Jupyter Notebooks working on AWS. You go to aws.com. Bam, here, go to my account, log in, bam, root user, sign on. All right, step one done. Step two, start an instance and go to deep learning Ubuntu 18. Now in this, in the past video, I go all into depth on why you want to choose deep learning, but all you need to know for this video is that deep learning is the number one AMI Amazon machine image that you want to choose. So you go to launch EC2. Bam, you go here, you type in deep learning. Bam, deep learning Ubuntu 18, select it, done. Then you're going to go to families and you're going to choose your family now or your instance type. Now it goes kind of in order. It starts at T, then it goes to Z. Again, if you want to know everything about instances, watch my other video and this one, we're gonna go for one graphics card. It's gonna be an NVIDIA Tesla T4. It's gonna have 15 gigs of uh, memory and it's gonna be enough for most projects of multiple gig data sets, uh, transfer learning, deep learning, CNNs, um, NLP, you, everything. So you're gonna to go to G4DN. Once we're on G4DN, we're gonna to go to Extra large, I'm, I like 32 gigs of memory and eight, eight cores. I'm gonna move my camera, configure details. Don't have to touch anything here, so move on to the next one. Here, storage. I talked about this in my other video. This AMI, Amazon Machine Image, comes with a little bit of data already taken up with everything that it has inside. And so I'm gonna be adding an extra 100 to this um, in case you know I have a couple of gigs of data I wanna push up. Next at tags, I'm gonna skip the tag step. Security group, all right, now we're gonna go back to my guide. Um, and it says, when security group, you should have port 22 open, that's open by default. And you wanna open a custom TCP port 888 on your IP or everywhere. So here I already have the 22 already open and we're gonna put that to anywhere. Now, I like doing my IP or anywhere. Again, for this video, I don't want to show my IP, so I'm going to go anywhere. I'm going to add a rule, custom TCP, make that 8888, go anywhere. Now we're done for this step. Moving on, it's going to tell us this isn't free, of course. It's going to tell us that we have a new thing. We're going to check everything, eight cores, 32 gigs, perfect launch. Now it's going to ask me for my key pair. If you've already done this, you can skip this, but if not, you know, most people haven't, you're going to choose a key. So you're going to create a new key pair and you're not going to want to lose this. Although, you know, you can always get a new one. So I don't really understand why they make it such a problem, but let's call it, I like calling it what my instances and what computer I'm using. So I'm going to do a Mac. I'm going to put a two because this is the second video I make G4 DN, which is my instance. I'm going to download it, save it. And we're done. We're going to launch as it launches. We're successful or you can now go here or you, you can go anywhere but i'm just gonna go here because quick video quick 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 um cool so now that while that starts i'm gonna talk about my other step so once you have whoa i just made an extra step no need okay so now what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go to where you created that key and you want to do a ch mod 400 on it this is because you want to um make sure people only have read and no write, I think. Um, let me make this big for you guys. So it says here in the instructions, you gotta go to wherever your, your folder is, yeah, sorry, your key, that's in the downloads. Perfect, 
cool. Now we're here. Now we do ch mod 400. And then we're going to do the key, which is Mac to um, G4DN. Then we're going to click enter. Done. Now we're done with that step. Next, start your AWS instance and terminal by going to the connect tab in AWS. And this is what you should see. Awesome. So let's go there. Here we have it. It's already running. That's what we were waiting for. Let me put this back here. Go to connect. Awesome. Going to go to the tab SSH client. And you're going to want to copy that. There you're done. Go back to this. Make sure you're in the same folder as your, your key. You're going to copy that. Enter. It's going to say, do you want to continue? You're going to go yes. And you're going to be done. Now, my guy, it says, because this is for machine learning. You don't have to do this if you don't want to do machine learning. But if you want to activate TensorFlow, you have to do source TensorFlow latest 34. Now, why? Because in this instance, if you scroll up, you get to see, if you go to the pretty part, see how it's pretty header, deep learning. It's going to have all the different environments already set up. And we like TensorFlow. If you want, um, if you want some PyTorch or anything else, you can do that. But this is going to be for TensorFlow. We're going to do TensorFlow activate. And you know, just like in your Conla environment, it's going to tell you what environment you're in. Done. Now, what does it say next? Then we have to start the Jupyter Notebook. You can do Jupyter Notebook or you can do Jupyter Lab. I'm just going to do Jupyter Notebook. Then we're going to click that there. Bam. Oh, I forgot a while on that. Oh, so much for being quick. All right, and we're going to have that done. Let's wait for that up to appear. Anytime you're running something for the first time in these instances, it takes a while, but then it really quickly speeds up. So no worries about that. First time you run Python, it takes a moment to start. Now it's starting up while it's doing that. I can go here. And so on my local machine, so I guess I'm going to have to open another terminal here open window cool and make that big for you guys at home it says you do ssh flag nfl 999 localhost 88 and then basically the rest of your key um your key and your the name of your instance so we're going to do that we're going to copy that and then we're going to do the name of my instance, which I don't remember it. So we're going to go back to AWS, copy everything right there before that. Sorry, after the SSH. And we're doing this to know where to lead our port to. We're leading our port 99999 to A, which is what originally we had um, for Jupyter Notebooks. Everyone always opens in A, so we're now moving that port we're basically doing a port forwarding copy that permission denied oh this is because i'm not in the right place where my key is i'm gonna go to downloads now we're gonna run the top thing that should work once we get no errors it means it worked and what does it say to do next in step number 10 it says you're gonna copy the last one of the last um you're going to copy the last URL that it gave you from Jupyter Notebooks. You're going to put it into your browser and you're going to change A888 to 99999. So let's do that. So it says right here, uh, this is the last one. We're going to copy that. We're going to go to our browser. We're going to paste it in. And before we click enter, we're going to change A888 to 9999 start that up bam there you have it now this Jupyter notebook is not running locally it's not on your machine at all it's running on your browser on someone else's machine so if i were to go in and let's say let's make a new here you get the choice of all your environments i'm just going to choose the latest tensorflow and let's say we wanted to see what gpu we had for um tensorflow so we can do you know do import oops Flow. Like I said, it always takes a minute to do that. And then we can do uh, NVIDIA SMI. We're going to do this to check which 
graphics card we have in this instance or how many graphics cards and you'll see as i mentioned almost any import the first time is going to take a while but then after that it should be blazing fast just a couple of seconds so after this one thing you should know is i'm not going to talk about this in this video if you want to know watch my other video but in order to get some data on and off, you can use something like using git clone and then just cloning it to your um, instance. But I do not recommend you use git LFS for large files. If you want to move data, you know, as a data scientist, you might have two, three gigs, five gigs of data. If you want to do that, I suggest using SCP in order to secure copy your files onto the instance. If you want to know all about that, again, go to my in-depth video. This is just my quick video. As you see here, this is this is done. I, I know how I know I have TensorFlow working perfectly now. And I have my Tesla T4 GPU already done and ready to go. And so we can use TensorFlow here, no problem. Now we can close this, leave page, leave, and let's say we're done. We're done with this instance, we want to turn it off. Please make sure to turn off your instance. If you're not done, just like I did this other one, terminated, you're going to want to click here and you're going to want to terminate your instance. Terminate, now it's done, it's shut down, it's over. And that's this video, guys. It's a really quick video to show you guys how to get Jupyter Notebooks working on AWS. Again, if you want more in depth, why I chose these settings, what other settings you can choose, I have another video in which I talk all about how to do this, but this is the e quick and easy version. If you just want to get started, this is how you do so. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next data tools series episode. See ya.